Okay, so continuing on from uh, the last um, critique, I'm going to continue with uh, one last question from Dan Johnson, and his question was, do you think you should be able to draw straight portraits before you attempt to draw caricatures? Um, I think that 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 definitely cannot hurt. Um, uh, you know, I've been teaching at Schoolism now, um, Schoolism.com, for I think five years now, maybe a little bit longer, and I've taught over 300 students. And one of the main things that I um, tend to notice uh, with a lot of the beginner students is that yeah, they they don't they don't have that foundation of of knowing how to draw uh, people from life or drawing realistic proportions. And I think that's definitely a very important thing to, to learn how to do. Um, and once um, once those foundations can be taught, um, their work starts to, to, to grow um, immensely and it starts to really show. So definitely, yes, uh, drawing, learning how to draw someone realistically, drawing the proportions correctly, um, and understanding what it is that you're looking at, like how to draw the eyes, how to draw the nose, um, how to draw the mouth, um, and, and the relationships between those features, um, you know, then you get into things like, you know, capturing expression or enhancing that expression. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, a sparkle in, in, in our eyes. You know, how do you capture that essence? You know, all these different things, you know, they're, they're really important, but yes, it comes down to a foundation of what is the most important thing. Um, definitely strong drawing foundation and an understanding, you know, how to draw realistically uh, is, is for sure something that's really important. Um, I'm going to move on to another question by Kim Cheng uh, Salvatore, and I hope I'm saying that right, um, who asks, when you want to paint a finished painting, do you work from the black and white sketch, or do you start a new one using the sketch as reference? Um, I'm assuming you're asking about this Dwight painting. Um, I have no intentions of turning this Dwight painting into a, a colored uh, painting. This is just something I did for fun, and I was focusing on the values. Um, so if... Um, I was going to do a color painting. I would just start with the color. Um, that's uh, you know I'll block in you know my colors first and and again I'm focusing on values, which I feel is the most important thing um, in my work anyway. That's really what I focus on. Um, so I could turn this into a color painting um, by glazing some color on top of the values and then painting opaquely on top of that. Um, so if if I you know were to want to make this a color painting, I would. I wouldn't start over. I would just use this and build from it. Um, and there's definitely, you know, when I, when I'm under a really quick deadline, um, there's there's uh, times where um, it is really important uh, to make a, a a quick deadline. So I will do a really you know quick black and white value painting and then glaze colors in there on top and then build on top of that. But for the most part, I prefer just to start with color. Uh, second question: How do you make your paintings and sketches look 3D? Um, and then you asked, how do you make your sketch or paintings look painterly but detailed at the same time? Um, so, uh, how do I make my paintings look 3D? Um, I, I guess um, I'm trying to capture reality, uh, and I'm I, I'm trying to to capture a realistic um, feeling of the, of what I'm seeing, which is basically capturing the lighting. You know that, that that's really important, capturing the correct lighting, but also capturing uh, the correct values. I, I focus the most on the values, and then when I'm drawing and painting people, um, I I like to imagine that that they could be animated um, in a movie, so that you could you know if you could imagine that you can reach your head around your hands in there and actually grab their head and turn their head around any way that you want. I want it to feel that realistic. And that just comes, um, I guess, it, I guess you got to think uh, scientifically a little bit, you know, you got to, you got to be able to observe um, what it is that you're seeing, you know, when, when light is hitting uh, a person's cheek and, and, and face, and maybe there's some light hitting uh, the upper part of their lip, you know, chances are that that some of that light is going to be bouncing off of that upper lip and reflecting underneath the nose or reflecting on the brow of, of the person's forehead. Um, so there's there's things like that you really have to pay attention to. Um, capturing those shadows and that light is really going to um, be a uh, an important part of, of capturing a realistic and three di three dimensional piece. Um, but really, you know, when I paint, I try to think of it like a, like I'm putting together a puzzle. 
I'm placing the correct values um, next to the correct values, the correct brush stroke laid down next to, the, to another correct brush brush stroke. And, and as you, you pull back and you look at the piece as a whole, um, it's going to look like a person, but really it's, it's an illusion. You know, all a painting is, is is brush strokes laid down next to one another. You know, don't think of it in, as, as if you're coloring in the lines like a coloring book. You know, it's, it's all about um, shape, structure, value, lighting, um, and of course understanding anatomy and structure. Um, I mean, this is all a huge amount of things that I'm saying. I mean, it, it comes with years of painting and and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of faces that I've painted. Um, this 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 comes from uh, from a lot of work. Um, but if you take the, these things that I'm saying to you and you continue to develop um, that, I, I think I think you'll start to see some changes in your own work. Hopefully. Um, so how do you make your sketch paintings look painterly but detailed at the same time? Um, I paint traditionally. I'm, I'm a traditional painter before I'm a digital painter. I, most of the work that I do now and most of what a lot of people know me for is my digital painting. But if I had it, uh, if I could just paint traditionally, I think I would just paint traditionally or mostly paint traditionally as I, I love that the most. I get the most out of painting that way. Um, and digital painting is fun, but it's just not the same thing. Um, I, I don't manipulate my my images digitally a lot of people have thought that in the past um, everything I do is drawn and painted um, and if, if you paint traditionally and you work hard at that when you paint when you paint digitally it's it's really easy I mean it's so easy compared to painting traditionally um, so you know I, I work in gouache I work in watercolor I work in acrylics and I work in oils not all together as a mixed media. I work in those those different mediums separately, and I and I try to um, learn how to do those different mediums in the best possible way that I can. I study a lot. I, I work a lot. I practice a lot, and and so when I paint digitally, um, I take all of that knowledge with me, and so I'm not trying to. I guess I guess I don't want my digital paintings to to look digital. I I. I and there was a time where I was, I was interested in painting photorealistically, um, but there's no uh, that 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 to me that's not really exciting and it's not challenging. It just takes a long time to do. To me, I love good painting, good brushwork, um, and that excites me. And so that's what I want my digital work to reflect. I want it to feel more traditional than digital. I want it to to have my thumbprint, my um, you know that a real person created this, um, and so I, I want the, I want it to look brushy. I want it to look imperfect. I don't want my paint my my paintings to look so perfect that that creates way too much of a digital look. And the way that I do that is I I'll do an underpainting like I would when I do an oil painting. I'll let some of the underpainting pop through in certain areas of my painting. Um, I will trying to not use the command Z button uh, instead of command Z undoing something I will actually just paint it out um, sometimes I will use the lasso tool to adjust you know area like like in this Dwight painting I realized the right eye um, needed to be adjusted so I lassoed it and moved it um, that's just a lot faster than repainting it but a lot of times I will just repaint things um, because a lot of happy accidents happen that way um, and that's really what I'm trying to do is I leave a lot of you know, you'll see in this um, in this Dwight painting, there's a lot of brush strokes and, and different marks all over the place that there would have been a time in the past where I would have painted those away and I would have made it all smooth and everything. Now I I love that. I love the the, the loose strokes and, and the layering and the texturing. Um, uh, it just feels more traditional. It feels more right to me. And and I'm not. I don't want to make my paintings perfect in a digital sense anymore. I want them to have more of a, a raw uh, and fresh look to them. Um, and so I guess the short, a short answer to your question after explaining this huge thing is that I think painting um, traditionally is going to be the key to helping you, uh, you know, really understanding how to do this digitally.